12.08 a.m. in the morning when we still had this vlog to get up and I have to be up at 4.30 in the morning uh, for my first meeting is to provide value for you. And if not for that, then why are we even here? So something in there is. <laughs> yeah, there's funny. Something in there. I kind of felt like, um, I kind of felt like on uh, Hustle and Flow. Mm -hmm. he's, he's like sitting next to this air conditioner when he's just like, tells that girl, he's, what's her name, like Cookie or something? He's like, kill the fan. He's like, kill that fan. <laughs> kill that fan, I'm about to drop this beat. <laughs> Good job. Yeah, you press with your vibe. Yo, what up, guys? It's Gary Vee, and it's time for the daily bread. Give us our daily bread. I want the whole basket. Cause I'm a hustle till I get it, or I'm in a casket. Passionate for providing value in every way. Not cashing in for providing value every day. Paying it forward, right thing, I'll do it till I'm dead. I hope you're hungry, cause it's time for the daily bread. It is. Sunday night, it's TJ's birthday. Mm -hmm. We're celebrating it by driving two hours. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> so we're headed to uh, Augusta, Georgia right now. Um, we've got meetings there. First one's at 5.45 in the morning. So, I mean, leaving tonight is better than leaving at, you know, 2 o'clock in the morning. So. Yeah. I've never seen an armadillo before, alive. And I've seen three of them now run across the road. I didn't even know they existed in Georgia. <laughs> Yeehaw! <laughs> Rounded up armadillos tonight. <laughs> up like it just uh it was rough like but um did it anyway and went to my first meeting today and sold 20 life insurance policies this morning so i'm uh very glad to be out of the um area that i was working in over the last few weeks like during this whole daily bread because it was just the schedule wasn't set up well with it and i just I kept telling tj i was like man like when we move on to our next location like Man, I can't wait so I can throw up some better numbers. So this week we were gonna throw up some sick numbers. <laughs> I already sold 20. I didn't have I don't think I had a single day where I sold over 20 policies yet on this show. And I sold 20 this morning. So anyways, came back, I did get a nap, which was awesome. And we're headed to the gym now. And I got another meeting at 5.45 p.m. that I hope to sell 30 policies at. 30 policies this evening. But I won't get out of there so until probably 11, 11.30 tonight. So. Just for those who might be new, I think, or who haven't been caught up, you... Those of you that have been cutting carbs lately and yeah, haven't been right. getting your daily bread in. So you had set as a goal before 50 in a week. Yeah, we'll do 50 in a day for sure. 50 in a day for sure. While sleeping. <laughs> While taking a nap. Yeah. So, and get a workout in. <laughs> Shout out to U View Apparel. You with a letter U, view apparel, because this is front facing camera right now, and this I guess is the U view, and you can see the hustle clearly, and you can see the hustle clearly, I mean, I mean, you know what I mean.
tattoos today. Please think about like Dude, he's talking about how right now. people are inspired because podcasts I was just on called the Daily Bread. There's your plug, bro. But <laughs> Tyler's a good dude. He's, he's come and seen Gary and I speak a couple times. Uh, he keeps up with me on social. I, I love what I love what he's doing because he's in the midst of the process. All right, guys. So in this exercise, I use this skit stick, and Tyler basically. <laughs> Tyler has to avoid the stick, but still kind of stay planted on the ground. You're gonna end up looking like uh, always avoid the stick. <laughs> he always avoids the stick, but you end up looking like um. Yeah, you just kind of avoid it, but it's good for hand-eye coordination. So okay, so basically speaking, it's like a bottle of weed. So if I go over here, and you can just do it stuck down. Yeah, exactly. Check one, two, one, two. <laughs> <clears throat> this is where I usually tell you what time it is so you know how long I've been working. <laughs> 11 56 p.m. And now we're just rendering the daily vlog from today. Uh, woke up at 4 30 this morning and been just back-to-back -back meetings all freaking day long. Like we had a 30 minute break or something, it was ridiculous. Um, but it's funny, so in the first like three weeks of these daily vlogs, um, you kind of heard me talk about this from time to time, but I kept telling TJ, I was like, man, I was like, um, this group that I'm working with right now, like it's just not my normal flow. And I kind of hated it on the inside, I was kind of like, kind of frustrated because uh, I wasn't doing the amount of volume and life insurance sales that I normally do, uh, which is an insane amount. Uh, still selling a bunch, like you know, 40 to 60 policies um, per week. But yesterday, uh, I sold 50 in a day. <laughs> today, I sold another 38 policies today. Uh, so 88 life insurance policies in two days. Uh, and I've got two more days to go, just jam-packed full of meetings like today. So now I'm I'm back in my groove. Like this is like um, my zone that I'm in right now. So I'm very interested to see how the um, content comes out from tomorrow and the day after. Um, now that I'm like in my like really like grind time of selling tons of life insurance, um, I think I could probably do 150, 175 life insurance policies in four days this week, and that'll be sick. Like sick, sick. Um, TJ asked me to get more tactical on this recap. So, I'm here with your daily sales tips. In all reality, I do want to um, give you guys a little bit more like meat, a little bit more, um, I don't know, like you said, tactical uh, information that you may be able to use. Because I know a lot of you are in sales, and uh, guess what? I don't know if you know this or not, but... TJ's alarm on his phone just went off, and I hope we keep that in this video so we can keep it real. Um, but I, whether you know this or not, you're, you are in sales, um, whether it's your profession or not. You're either selling yourself to someone in everything that you do, or you're selling yourself to do something in every uh, minute of every single day, uh, whether to do what you're supposed to do or do what you're not supposed to do, whether to... Um, execute or to try on a daily basis there's millions of examples um, and you're selling your kid on eating broccoli at dinner if you're a stay-at-home mom like there's every element of the fact that you are a salesperson so let me talk about sales real quick and talk about um, the key to our success within our company and our system and it's a little thing that I like to call riches in niches you sorry sons of <gasps> Tyler, you can't say that. Just kidding. That would have been the first time I would ever cuss on this blog. Vlog, sorry. But I didn't. Um, so riches and niches, like that's that's it. Like that's everything. Um, so many people in sales, especially in financial services, real estate, insurance. Um, uh, there's a lot of different examples in sales, but... So many people try to be all things to all people and they end up being nothing to no one. 
Um, they try to catch the attention of many and they get and end up with the attention of few or I would say probably none. When you go narrow in your niche and, and I'm talking about crazy narrow, it seems counterintuitive, right? Like, hey, I want to go reach a ton of people. I want to go make a ton of sales. Like I need to have a big audience, a big potential market, a big target market, a big um, uh, group that I can uh, sell to. That's how I'm going to make the most money. That's how I'm going to make the most sales. No, it's not. The more narrow that you get, the more it gives you the ability to go all in on that niche and build all your systems around serving those individuals, using all your hours in the day to just master and become an expert in everything that is those people to where you know them better than they know themselves, where you know that what they're thinking, you know what to say to them, you know how to say it, you know what to wear, you know what kind of hand movements to use, what kind of brochures, what kind of uh, business cards, if you, if, if you should have nothing in your hands, like with what I do, with, like every single thing that you do is so calculated and so well thought out. Number one, it's the ultimate form of respect because you are giving that person exactly what they want, whether they know it or not, because you know them better than they know themselves. But number two, it's the only way to truly master the sales process. Um, so let me just try to think of an example, just like on the fly. Real estate. This is probably the easiest one to give an example of. You're in real estate, right? Okay, great. So you can try to sell every type of house to every type of person and every type of market. And guess what? You'll probably end up selling nothing to no one. Or you could get crazy narrow. And I don't mean crazy narrow like um, houses on the east side of town. I mean crazy narrow like I only sell to first time home buyers on the east side of town that want to buy one story ranch homes. That like that. But you can literally start creating content around that specific type of person to where you become the expert to where when someone brings up like, hey, I'm looking for a, a one story on the east side. And they're like, oh my gosh, like have you talked to Tyler Harris? He is the king of one story houses on the east side of town. You have to talk to him. When you can become that level of an expert because you've gone that narrow and all in on that one focus, uh, then you own it. Like you can own it. And that's what we've done with our system is we have absolutely flat out owned the market that we serve, owned the niche that we serve. And notice that I keep saying serve, serve, serve. Like it's I say it, it's just like second nature to me, but I'm just was thinking as I was saying it that it's probably um, a little rare to hear and, and probably a little unique for uh, for you to hear uh, me say it, but, but we serve. We are here to serve. I'm not selling you anything. I'm serving you, but I'm only able to serve you because I put in the amount of work and put in a level of respect to give you something in the way that you want to receive it, and that is serving. Um, serving is providing a, a solution for a need, for providing a solution for a problem. That's serving. So when you talk about being a servant leader, like you can be a servant salesperson. I don't even know if that word exists, but you can be that if you go all in and studying and, and really understanding the psychology of the person that is on the other side of the table from you every single day. Uh, and by doing so, it enables you to do an insane amount of volume because you can streamline all those processes. It's just like a process with anything. It could be a process in manufacturing. Once you get a process down based around a specific type of outcome that you're trying to get, then it's all about refining it. Then it's all about, okay, we have a 30 minute presentation. We can probably take out two thirds of it now that we know exactly what words is exactly uh, pulling on the heartstrings of that person or that is, um, uh, getting that person into a buying uh, buying mode, uh, we can probably condense that down into seven minutes. Okay, now we got a 30 minute presentation getting done in seven minutes. Now we can see 50 people in a day that we were normally seeing 10 people in a day. And that gives you a lot more people that you can close. That gives you a lot more potential sales that you can make and a lot more potential commissions and revenues that you can earn. Uh, but it all gets back to going all in on your niche. 
if you're going to choose a group of people to serve, if you're going to choose a group of people to work with all of the time, you should probably choose a group of people that you genuinely enjoy being around. Maybe it would make life more enjoyable if the people that you worked with every single day you actually liked. What a thought. So just think about that. Like that's probably the best group that you should work with. Like, so again, if you're a real estate agent, when you're going out on, on calls with potential clients, when you're going to look at houses, when you're doing an open house and you have those certain people that walk in the door that you're like, oh, thank God, it's one of them. Versus when you have certain people that walk in the door and you're like, oh, ugh, get these people out of here like as quickly as possible. Who are those people that you just genuinely love being around, that you genuinely love working with? Uh, that's who you need to build your systems around. That's what's going to bring fulfillment in your life because you're working with the people that you want to work with and you're creating a system around it to be able to work with more of them. And it's just an enjoyable way to go about your life. You want to talk about quality life? Work incredibly hard all day with people you love being around and make an incredible living. That's fulfillment. Like it may take some trial and error, but at the end of the day, going narrow on your niche is the only way, in my opinion, that you're going to become extremely wealthy, extremely successful, and extremely happy because quality of life is found in doing work with the people that you love doing it with and being able to be successful by making an impact by providing, again, a solution for people's needs.